All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insider interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a bit of a windy San Diego today. And I am delighted to be joined from Sarasota in Florida by Richard Wildman. How are you doing, Richard? I'm doing fine, John. Good to see you. Thanks for inviting me. Of course, of course. And and Richard has had a, a very interesting life, unfortunately, orphaned at age six. Uh, he lived through 19 foster homes, attended 11 different schools, um, which if anybody has ever uh, had any interaction with the foster system and stuff, you know, it's, a, it's amazing how you've come through it. <laughs> and uh, rather than becoming a victim, he overcame them and has a remarkable business success, including an award-winning general sales manager of Rolls-Royce to heading sales and marketing at Rob Report, a magazine for luxury lifestyle. You're a Hall of Fame inducted keynote speaker, inducted into the Customer Experience Hall of Fame for your legendary work. And you're the author of two international bestsellers, the latest of which, The Power of Why, Breaking Out in a Competitive Marketplace, is in seven languages, and it's also a CEO Reads bestseller. And we're going to talk about your next book, which is coming out on March 12th, which is 100, here we go, 100 Proven Ways to Acquire and Keep Clients for Life, The Path to Permanent Business Success. All right, uh, Richard. Let's start off. Just give me the give me the genesis of the book. Oh, okay, the genesis. So, um, <clears throat> uh, after all the other things that I did, uh, people began to call me and ask me to speak about how do you market to people, et cetera, because of the success we had in other uh, yeah. my other careers, as I call. It. So, I started a research based consulting firm, and we've been doing this for thirty years, and. Uh, what we, what our genesis of our information is, we, people ask me all the time, Richard, what do you think? Or they'll say, what do you think the consumer thinks? It doesn't matter what we think they think. I want to go talk to those people over in the, in the stucco house and find out what they're really thinking. Mm -hmm. So through all of our consulting activities in many different industries, from fast food to banking to advisory, hospitality, NFL, done all kinds of work there. We've had the opportunity to interact with a tremendous number of people at all different economic levels. And one of the things that I've always done is when I'll ask people, you know, what motivates you to do business? What changes your mind? How do you move? So and I make a lot of notes. All right. Long story short, we have the pandemic and it occurs to me within as soon as people start going back to work, whether it was remote or in person, everything had changed. Mm -hmm. And what was the genesis of it? One night it hit me. What's going on with people? is people are currently going through a great re-evaluation. You know, we had the great resignation. And I was thinking about it. I thought, that's not what's happening. No. People are going through a great re-evaluation. Am I with the right doctor? Am I at the right restaurant? Do I have the right of financial advisor? Is this the right real estate company? Do I have the right mortgage company? So they're evaluating because most industries are commoditized, if not all mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And so it dawned on me, wait a minute, what are people really looking for? They were evaluating their, and we all do this. We all evaluate. Yep. And so then I began, that began, I'll, I'll call it my path, to find out what does it take for people to really, number one, want to be with you. Number two, stay with you. And relationships drive revenue. Anybody in business that really is in business knows those relationships. The lifetime value of a relationship is almost difficult to comprehend because it's so significant. So I began to ask people, and what dawned on me, setting aside competence, I mean, it's somewhat mm -hmm. obvious. Yeah. I mean, you can't say I'm a dentist if you've never been trained. Sure. Okay, so let me be clear. So competency is a given for most people. If they're calling a business or working with a professional, they expect you to be competent in whatever, shall we say, enterprise you're involved mm -hmm. in. But here's what they're looking for. They want a personalized and humanized experience with you as a provider. They're no longer interested in just, uh, you know, how shall we say it, uh, you being a provider. What they want is a portfolio of great memories at every single touch point. Yeah. And there's been a lot of conversation, John, you know that all over the about elevated experience and the path and the mm. journey of the consumer. Number one, they're not on a journey. I don't want them to end anywhere except <laughs> at my place of business. That should be the business owner's thought. We don't want them passing through on their way to somewhere. Right. Yeah. What we want is make them for life. Is that helpful for you? Yeah, no, very, very much, Richard. And and I agree with you. I think uh, pre-pandemic, and I think we're starting pre-pandemic, actually, the people were 
we're kind of sort of getting tired of being held at an arm's length by all these businesses or totally hands off. I often say to people, you know, I use a lot of different SaaS products uh, and I don't have a relationship with 99% of them. And I'd swap them in a heartbeat tomorrow if something better came along or something cheap or whatever, because I have none of that relationship. And I think, and I think when the pandemic happened, that's when people suddenly rediscovered, oh, the human connection matters. That's exactly right. And, and I saw that shit. I mean, it wasn't like uh, somebody, you know, uh, sure. there was one instant. I just saw people said, well, you know, we've been with them a long time, but they really treat me like an accountant. I'm tired of being treated like, or, you know, I just feel like I'm just, I'm just, you know, one of their client base or, uh, you know, it's always a transaction. They're always about the money. There's no sense of connection. So to your point, that's exactly what happened. And as a result of that, we, and the reason I wrote the book, is because it occurred to me all of these years and all the work we've done that there are many different ways to connect with people in a personalized and humanized way. And the four things that people are looking for, the first thing is they want somebody that cares enough to find out what they're really needing. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they want some, someone kind enough to go the extra mile. Thirdly, they want someone thoughtful enough to see their point of view. And fourth, they want an empathetic environment and relationship. So they feel like, let's say, as sales professionals, mm -hmm. you're on their side of the table. That's where people are today. And they're evaluating, am I with the right people? Will they take me for granted? Um, and there's so many things that occur that maybe you, maybe, you know, if you've got your pipeline, that's great. Well, maybe mm -hmm. people see that and say, okay, well, uh, they put their name in. Sam. Well, Sam might be like, go by Samuel. Yeah, we don't know that. And Elizabeth, I have a friend in Atlanta. She's uh, her nickname is Lolly. Her <laughs> name is Elizabeth. If you call her Elizabeth or Beth or Liz, she doesn't respond to that. And because her grandfather gave her lollipops when she was a little kid, she loved them. They've called her Lolly her whole life. And she's nice. in her 70s and a very <laughs> wealthy woman. So but she fired a financial advisor because he kept sending her emails. Dear Liz, yeah, yeah. I've told you three times. My name is Lolly. Before the, you know, here at corporate, we have to define. Yeah, yeah, so and I, and I, th I think that's a, that, that's a really good point. I think did you bring up there because sometimes it those are those are the it's the small things that sometimes make the relationship. Like oh, you listened to me and you understood that this is my name, so you started to use it. Or maybe you said, "Is it okay if I call you Lolly?" Uh, right. And there you go. Now you have a completely different relationship rather than, oh, I'm sorry, it's our corporate policy to call you by the name that you don't go by. Right. It's like somebody named Doctor, like yeah. Dr. Donna Wilson. And we say, well, Donna, well, yeah. I've worked in dealing with doctors. You don't call them by their name until they say that you can. So exactly. to your point about asking for me. But other things that we do, we send emails out and we sign them best. We polled that live polls, interns on the phone. Women particularly went berserk when they heard they were like, why do they say that? Can't they say like best regards? Best for who? Best for me? Best for and you know, I really that really caught my, my intern said, Wow, uh, people are offended. They feel like it's just a throwaway line. Mm -hmm. So we began to test it. Sincerely yours, they thought was way institutional. The the big winners, kind regards, warmest regards, even warmest regards. And fourth on the list was best regards. Add that other word. It's a little thing, but people mm -hmm. felt a different sense of connection if we were gracious to them in our salutations. It's kind of like salespeople will say, so does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, absolutely. But, it, you know, it's it's so interesting about these things because we, we live in this kind of real casual culture where people are think they can get away with casual communication right out of the gate without ever... Uh, you know, without ever discovering whether that's how the other person wants to be communicated with. Like, I mean, me personally, like, I mean, I use hello a lot of times for the greetings in emails because I just go back to my dear old mother, dearly departed, who used to say, hi, uh, you know, hey, and hi, and hey, hey is for horses. <laughs> yeah. What's up? You know, and all of that, right? And you're right, it, that words matter. It's just like, you know, I, I all the time I get an email, I'm just following up. Why would, what does that mean? If you call somebody on the phone as a sales professional and say, hi, I'm just calling up, you know, and see where you and your wife have made a decision or Mrs. Wilson, have you made a decision? Look, if they've made a decision, they would have called you already. 
the point is when you call people, adults want steps. So I'm going to call them on the phone and I'm going to say, Hey, John, Richard Wildman here. I know that mortgage we were talking about. I figured out three additional steps we could take to maybe get your rate down about a point and a half. Would that be of interest to you? Yeah. And what's John going to say? Yes. Oh, yeah. Adults want steps. I'm not calling to follow up. Or not my other all-time favorite. I'm calling to touch base. I did that with the CEO probably 30 years ago. And, I, <laughs> and you know what he said to me? He said, you're doing what? I said, I'm just calling to touch base. He said, great. I'm on home plate and you're out. And he hung up on me. <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic. That was really the beginning, maybe, of where all of this came from. And and I began to realize that that ability to communicate with people, of course, living in foster homes, that was maybe the ground floor for me. But mm -hmm. I began to realize that not only did words matter, but if you were kind and gracious and with people, if you were very thoughtful. And, you know, kind is walking them to the elevator. Thoughtful is riding down the elevator to the lobby. Mm. Kind is saying, uh, thank you for coming in. I'll validate your parking ticket. Thoughtful is giving them an umbrella to cross the street so they don't have to hold their paperwork over the head because it's raining. Those yeah. are the things that people remember. And what happens is you build an incredible portfolio of memories with these people. Yeah. And it changes the entire dynamic. You know, um, and when you demonstrate empathy, you know, Stephen Covey, um, and I put a quote in the book. I'll just paraphrase it because I don't know mm -hmm. your time. But essentially what he said was that when you demonstrate empathy, defensiveness goes down and openness for a solution appears. Neha Kaffer, who did, it was a kindness activist, said, when you are kind, people will remember your kindness long after they forget your title. Yeah, no, and and I and I I believe that, and I, but but I think that we live in this world today. As I said, we live in a very casual culture, but we also live in a very distracted culture, and it's almost like people have gotten so distracted that they've forgotten how to be, how to be thoughtful, how to go the extra mile, how to, as you said, how to be truly empathetic, because they, you know, they hear about oh, you have got to be authentic and uh, empathetic to be a good salesperson today, and you go and I'll show you how to do that, and I'm thinking okay, if you need to show me how to do that, then I'm in serious trouble. Right. Well, it's you're exactly right, and you know you can hire attitude and you can hire effort, but you can't train nice. I mean that's sort of fundamental. So mm -hmm. you have to think about it from that perspective. But in terms of empathy. Uh, I really struggle with this because, I mean, we have a, you know, we're a consulting firm, but I speak at, you know, sure. I, mean, I speak all over the world, as you know, and um, do keynote after keynote. But the thing that always came to my, my mind was it's not good enough to get up there and talk at a galaxy level. You need to be doing this to elevate the customer. If you need to be, well, that's good. But that audience is sitting there saying, well, that's really good. And I agree with that. But how am I going to do that? What are the steps? What do I do? How do I get to? So I've really built our entire business around prescriptive tactics. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a call from a, a fellow Friday. He said, I want you to keynote our convention because we've had plenty of people tell us what to do. We need you to come in and give us some prescriptive tactics so we can get this done. And then that's not about me. What that is, is what's going on in, in our companies that people today want a path. They want mm -hmm. a path to move forward on. So this empathy thing became a real issue for me. I was really struggling. Like, I mean, I can tell you to be empathetic, but how can I write a very prescriptive? The book is a hundred proven ways. Yep. It's a hundred prescriptions is what it <laughs> with what to do, how to do it, and a story yep. and everyone backs it up. Now, with that said, I woke up in the night. I sat straight up in bed like that, startled. And I went, it's the predicate. It's the predicate. And my wife woke up. She said, there's a predator? And I said, no, it's the predicate. It's the predicate, honey. I said, the predicate's in the wrong place. So I jumped out of bed and I read it. She said, what are you doing? I said, it's the predicate. Because we're taught, if you don't mind me asking, John, how much money are you going to spend on that house? Well, as soon as I say, if you don't mind me asking, it's like, don't come any further. It's the predicate. So I immediately, I mean, our next coaching call, we just, and companies we were working with all over the globe, and people that, that I've gotten, I don't even know, hundreds of emails from salespeople. Oh, my God, I put the predicate on the back. It was like a whole different question. And people felt like they were talking to a friend. So mm -hmm. let me give you an example. So if I said to you, well, how much money are you going to be investing with us? To, <laughs> well, you know, that's what people do. Or 
If you don't yeah. mind me asking, how much money do you have in the bank right now, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, then my own. We, <laughs> yeah. we talked about that right in a second there, big boy. Yeah, the exactly. That, so, John, how much money would you like to invest with us if, if you don't mind me asking? It's a lot different. And people go, uh, well, I wouldn't normally talk about it, but <laughs> let me tell you my situation. Mm. And every salesperson can switch that predicate and win. Another yeah. thing that I discovered through this journey of writing this book and talking to people, I would say, what helps you move your business to someone else? So, well, when we're exploring working with somebody else, we hate it when they're aggressive. I said, mm. well, what do you mean by that? Well, we'll go into a dealership. We'll go into a furniture store. We'll talk to a realtor. How can I help you? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> got a problem. I don't know how you can help me. Or what can I do for you? I don't know that either. <laughs> On the other hand, so I said, I, I mean, we ask hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. So what would what would you want to do differently? Well, they ought to let us tell our story. And boy, it was yeah. like a light went off in my head. I was like, that's the secret. Uh -huh. Everybody today has a story. Yeah. So when you meet with somebody, I'd say, well, John, nice to see you. Thank you for coming in today. Really delighted we had this opportunity. Now, my role as a financial advisor to help get people get their financial life in balance. But before we get to all of that, how long have you lived here in the San Diego area? If you don't mind me asking. Right. Yeah. yeah. Here comes God. While we're here, my three kids and my four children and seven wives and all this stuff is all going to come rolling out. I'm saying, great. Now, what are you most proud of? You said you're in the podcast. What are you most proud of that you've been able to accomplish in that business? Well, let me tell you about that. And here we go. And great. Now, you said you're a sales pop. That's really good. What do you think the growth pattern looks like for the next couple of years? Well, let me tell you what our strategy is going to be. Well, by the time we're done here, they, you know what their brain is? We did this in focus groups. People would sit there and go, my side of the table. My, they push the button, my side of the table. Cares about me. Cares about me. Cares about my family. Cares about it didn't matter what the product line was. Right. So, I mean, I gave you an example in what was a financial service, but it doesn't matter. But it's real estate, attorney, CPA, mm -hmm. fast food restaurant. I mean, we worked with Freddie Steak, Burger and Custard to create the Freddie's way of doing business. Right. We tore half the booze out of the stores and put moving chairs and tables in. Why? Because I would stand in there and watch them. And the kids <laughs> would come in at night from the baseball game and others, uh, you know, the church group and all of this. And they're in booze yelling over the each other disrupting yep. I said, tear out some of these booths and put movable chairs and tables in why right. so they can have a sense of community right there well they just won the national restaurant award for the best best casual in the country they beat them all smash burger culver's <laughs> everybody why they build a sense of community a sense of belonging sense of relationship and people say we're in the right place yeah and and that is and that's such a different uh and that's such a different approach to as we see a, a lot of things today where it's just kind of trying to force you down paths all the time and we don't like to be we don't like to be we don't like to be feel like we're being pushed down a particular path we want to go down the path voluntarily if that if you convince me that that's a, a good path for me to explore that's exactly right and, and that convincing is good but, but if you begin with curiosity mm -hmm. wow people that are curious well how can you know if somebody said so what do you do well i enjoy what i do because as a uh, podcaster, I really help people get new information. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Well, how do you do that? Well, let's have breakfast for lunch one day next week, and I'll explain our business model. And then you can tell me how you got your business started. And maybe you could be a guest. Yeah. The point is, instead of jumping, let them have an opportunity and position yourself in a way that they see you as a resource to solve their problem, not somebody trying to convince them. People don't want to be convinced anymore. Curiosity is driving the game. Mm -hmm. They don't like, you know, look, people don't want to be sold anything. If they're going to, they can go online and buy it. They're trying to solve something. So if you can come with the attitude of humanizing and personalizing, elevating their experience, being kind, thoughtful, caring, and empathetic, they want to do business. With mm -hmm. you. That's why, you know, you're, you're, you know, you are very big in the CRM business. And I have people, well, I have this CRM and I have this CRM. I said, it doesn't matter what. Yeah. Um, you know, you label it. I said, what you have to do, though, mentally is realize, that, yes, it's a customer relationship management system. But the way you should view it is a customer experience management yeah. system. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the thing absolutely. you do at Sales Pop is you set up all these different fields. Well, that's great. Doesn't like alcohol. I have a situation right now. Mm -hmm. CEO called me. They're going to lose a $17 million household. Why? Because people don't drink. They've told them three right. times. 
just kind of went into a bourbon tasting to meet the new CFO. Oh yeah, and <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a really in interesting one. Actually, just an interesting thing too that might interest you, Richard, as well. On our on the CRM side for our support, we we deliberately have invested in people and make it a human based support. So when people our people go on and when somebody has a problem, they go on and they help them and they find out and they just don't, they're not about closing tickets. They're about solving the problem and then advising, maybe helping maybe. And, and that is, and that's what our, and that's the number one thing our customers say is that our service is next to none. Well, and the reason is why, because you're taking time to guide them and give, if I'm hearing you correctly, prescriptive yeah. tactics mm -hmm. to be able to implement and get the value for their money that yeah. they're looking for and to get the experience where they feel like they're at the right place with the right provider. And mm -hmm. everybody, I don't care where you get your hair cut, your, your, your uh, dress dry cleaned, your, your shirts pressed, it doesn't matter. People want personalization and humanization. I'll give you an example. I was <clears throat> out today, I pulled into a parking spot and it said, um, there's a big sign. And it said, customers only. We've all been to those, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. No signs, right? So, you know, what do you think it said underneath? It probably said, all others will be towed. <laughs> not this guy. He's built a massive business. It says, parking for Monarch Direct customers only. Underneath it, red letters. All others will soon become customers. <laughs> That's good. I like that. He's, I like he's that. gobbling up market share in Southwest Florida. I mean, a record pace. In fact, he just bought the mm -hmm. sign company that thought they were competing with him. Oh, really? That, no. That, again, it's, it comes back to what we were saying about the humanization. There's an interesting thing. It was about three or four days ago. I don't know whether you saw in Canada where Canadian Airlines got taken to small claims court by a, a somebody who'd bought a ticket, but through their chat bot. And they're they're supposed to get a, a discount because it was a bereavement, and apparently they have a policy if there's a bereavement and you have to book quickly, you get a discount. Anyway, person didn't get a discount, got wrong information from the chatbot, took them to small claims court, and Canadian Airlines brilliantly decided to say, "Oh well, the chatbot that's a different entity, so we're we're not responsible. We can't be held liable for what the chatbot says." And of course, the the judge in the case went, "That's the stupidest like yeah. excuse I've ever heard." It's not me, it's you. Don't you get remember it's you. It's not yeah. me. <clears throat> but that's just a classic example of just forgetting about about people. Right. Listen, you know, uh, Patricia Fripp, a good friend of mine, is also a Hall of Fame speaker. Yes, I know. <clears throat> she I know her. I've I've interviewed her a number of times. Oh, you have, yeah. Well, she's a lovely, delightful mm -hmm. person. And and uh, but she has a I'll paraphrase a little bit here, but basically. When you close a sale, it's a beginning of a relationship. It's not the end. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the point. The challenge is that too many business owners, CEOs, and others are so focused on results, they don't understand the way to build a pipeline is to build relationships because the relationships are the long-term and the lifetime value of that particular customer or client, however you want to describe said individual. So the way people are treated today is the hallmark. That's what people look for. In the book, <clears throat> in the uh, uh in the intro portion, uh, I talk about Chewy. And if you like, I'll tell you a very brief story. Yeah, please. Really the bedrock. Okay, so I'm speaking in Nashville uh, at the uh, at a convention a year ago in November. I don't know, ballroom, 15, 12, 1500, you know, normal general session, a lot of people. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm talking about elevating the client experience to stand apart from the competition. And here's the strategies, here's how you do it. And people were writing like crazy and and I said, and um, and I said, so as an illustrative point about how your brand could be highlighted, I read on LinkedIn this morning. I said I noticed a a post that a woman had done that she has a standing order with Chewy, and every month she gets cat food. Well, this month being November, she got the cat food order, and she called Chewy and said, "I want to return the cat food. My cat has died." And the rep at Chewy said, "Absolutely not. We will not <laughs> let you send that back." We want you to Good. donate it to the local shelter. Oh, and then we'll wow. Give, we're going to give you 100% credit on your bill. So the audience, first reaction is absolutely not. They're like, and then, yeah, like, yeah. Oh my. You got me on that one. <laughs> well, it was like, and then I said, but that's not the whole story. Because three days later, 
she got a bouquet of flowers and a handwritten note of condolence from the customer service rep. John, at that instant, in the middle of this ballroom with a thousand, twelve, whatever it was, this woman stands up and screams, that was my cat. I posted oh. that on LinkedIn. Oh, wow. I mean, you could have heard That's it. amazing. You, I mean, the room was like total, I mean, yeah. dead silence. The CEO's on the front row. His eyes are like this big. And she held up her phone. She said, and look, 1,300 likes, 1,300 <laughs> likes. So I just stopped. Yeah. I said, ladies and gentlemen, what does this tell us about Chewy? And it was like it was programmed. The whole room starts chanting, we're switching to Chewy. We're switching to Chewy. And I just wow. I said, now, do you see the value of personalization, humanization, connecting with your customer? You might say, well, they're a great big company. You know, it's easy for them to do that. Actually, I deal with big companies who tell me frontline people can't be bothered with this. Well, they'll be bothered yeah. with it when the sales slow down because they won't have as much to do. Or you can lay them off and they'll go somewhere else where the companies are personalizing yeah. using it and it will take off. Yeah. And by the way, it also obviously it makes the people working there feel more empowered. Right. <laughs> Somebody told me about uh, there's one air, airline. I can't remember what it is, but they they allow a certain amount, I think, like fifty dollars or whatever per person uh, that works there that they can give away. I don't know whether it's daily or weekly or whatever. Mm -hmm. And somebody was on a flight and, you know, they were having a glass of wine and they said, oh, this wine is really nice. I really like it. And when they're getting off the flight, the, the, the person who was serving them comes over and says, here's a bottle for you to celebrate your trip and all of that kind of stuff. And it, oh, yeah. And but it's because they're empowered by the company. Yeah. And it makes all and who, who benefits the entire brand. I mean, well, absolutely. Called, I mean, it's like what we do with Freddie Steakburger and Custard. Uh, the brand. I, I work with Bank Leumi, second largest bank in Israel, and they're redoing their website. And we did a whole, all kinds of interviews. And they sent it to me and said, "Well, what, are we good to go here?" And I said, "It's perfect. Got the brand promise right. We shared, you know, we went through a whole process and helped rebrand them." I said, "Well, we got to change that my account up there." And he's like, "What do you mean?" I said, "You can't call it my account." Well, it is their account. No, no, it's not their account. They don't want to be an account. Well, what do they want to be? They want to feel like you personalize and humanize. They said, well, what will we change though? I said, why don't you change it to my Liumi? Ah, yeah. And, you know, it, you could just, it was a Zoom call, you know, with from the Middle East, and they changed it. And it is unbelievable the amount of, the number of people that now felt like, oh, guess what? We have our own place. And yet I go to on lots of websites, your account, your account. It, no. You know, it should be my Target, my Walmart, my Amazon. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. Absolutely. Well, listen, Richard, this has been fantastic. Uh, it's so much wisdom. And uh, and again, just remind everybody, the book is coming out in March. Uh, as Richard was saying before we even came on air, it's the, the pre-orders are phenomenal. And just, just to put it in context, um, Richard, for the audience, sure. business, business books normally if people sell a couple of thousand, it's about, it's over the lifetime, it's considered a decent success. Getting, you know, having to go to print early because you're getting pre-orders, it gives you a measure of how good this book is. So okay. um, before we go, Richard, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, John. Uh, the You can go to my website. Let's do that to make it easy for you. Go to Richard, and I'll spell it, W-E-Y-L-M-A-N. Richard, W-E-Y-L-M-A-N.com. All right. So, and it'll be below this too. Yeah. And I speak, um, well, I, I speak at conferences all over the world on competitive differential, on marketing, and on elevating the client experience. And I also have a whole leadership suite that we do. So I have a consulting company. Uh, we do a tremendous amount of consulting in a lot of different industries. As I mentioned, from the NFL to fast food to uh, real estate. Uh, and we don't just do consulting the old normal way. Here's your plan, man. Thanks for the check. <laughs> no, we will not engage with you unless you will allow us to help coach your key people into implementation mm. phase. Because who cares what anybody thinks? If we don't implement, you don't get ROI. So we have yeah. consulting division, coaching division, and I speak at conferences. But what I've done with this new book coming out, you can go there. By the way, you can click and download a chapter free if you like. On, the, on my website, but go to the resources and click. I just loaded about uh, 20 some odd videos, little snippets 
community. You can go out and you just can use it for sales meetings, et cetera. It's just a way to bring forward an idea that you can have a conversation about that will elevate the experience your team has, and most importantly, that your customers have so you build customers and clients for life. So that's Richard yeah, Wildman, W-E-Y-L-M. It's all free. You can go just just go there, watch the videos, and have fun. Yeah. I'm just trying. Yeah, and all that information will be below this video, but please do go check it out. And as as Richard said, his, the way he does things is everything's prescriptive. So the book is 100 Proven Ways. Everything has a, everything is laid out for you. So if you're looking for a path to run on or a track, a track to run on, go check it out. All right, well, listen, thanks again, Richard. Thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you all again soon. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Take care. God bless.